Well, the plant kingdom and the food that they have to buy at the store is is most often genetically modified. GMO stands for genetically modified organism, and they're messing and meddling with insect DNA and spider DNA and sheep DNA and goats, and they're mixing this stuff up with, uh, you know, plant life, and they're they're growing these monstrosities that are part this and part that, and the things that are going on behind the scenes in these uh, genetic labs. And some of them are probably underground. Some of these things that are underground are underground for a purpose. Because see, if, it, if these things get out on the surface, then there's things that they know will cause, you know, catastrophic death, not only to them, but their families and extended friends and all. So these scientists do a lot of this stuff in labs under the ground. You know, they have uh, these levels that they have. And if one level, in fact, there's a movie that you can watch. I know this is just hypothetical stuff, but it's uh, Hollywood has some reflection of what we are doing. I mean, back when they made the movie uh, Frankenstein, you know, electricity was really scary. You know, so it was the, the new threat. But the, the new threats today are probably mostly genetic. And when they show you these labs underground, there's this movie called The Andromeda Strain. Andromeda Strain. And it was made for TV, uh, the new one. The, oh, the first one was kind of primitive, but the new one really brings out a lot of these things, these issues of, of genetic manipulation. And uh, they have these labs underground, and if there's a, the, the, the bigger threats are, are deeper and deeper and different levels. And if something bad happens in one lab, then the upper labs have security measures. And they even have, in some cases, they say, uh, nuclear weapons underneath these labs to completely wipe out whatever it was that was, uh, you know. I mean, you know, they have catastrophic uh, measures that they can take to alleviate the problem if it ever it, it, it develops. But uh, these, uh, these genetic manip manipulations, like for example, if you took a, the DNA out of an animal and you combine it with a human DNA and you create this monstrosity, it probably can't reproduce, but they can still clone it and make more and more of them, you know, for military purposes and so forth. But you, you put the, uh, the ability, genetic ability of a spider and a lion and a man mixed together, you have this uh, chimera. It's a chimera. And uh, you unleash these things on the surface of the planet, and they're really wise. They have the mental processes of people, and they call them transhumans. You know, uh, they call them H plus, a human plus something else. And if they get to the point where regular human beings who can reproduce and, and live and breathe on the, on the, and make families, uh, they'll be, if they ever get to the point where these creatures are out there and they rule us, which I think is starting to maybe come about, it, uh, it, it, it develops into a situation where we're uh, enslaved, you know, and it, and it isn't unlike what happened back in the pre-flood days with the Nephilim, because they were literally tearing into people and eating them, you know, alive, eating men and animals. That's what they were doing. So the all, the all flesh had become corrupted with this, this genetically modified organism that we read in Scripture as being Nephilim. And it's happening again, and it, only it's happening uh, rapidly because... I mean, just think about it. In 1903, the Wright brothers demonstrated a, a, the flight of a plane just over 100 feet, and everybody's going, wow, this is amazing. Well, what are we doing now? You know, just a little over 100 years later. And the genetic world has advanced even further than that. You know, we, we've got the space shuttles and all these 
uh, <laughs> these craft that can leave the earth and change their engine combustion to rocket fuel, you know, and then come back into the earth. And they're going like Mach 7, you know, seven times the speed of sound. They can go around the earth, you know, in less than one day or really in like, in like 12 hours. But, uh, yeah, there's just, it's just a, you know, the technology is uh, just running away. And wars... Wars usually kept that under control for most of the historical periods, but we don't know what happened before the flood, but there apparently were uh, a rapid development of technological things, not only uh, mechanical, but also genetically. But, uh, you know, he's going to punish those that are destroying his earth, his creation, and he's going to burn it. You know, that's what we know. He, he flooded the first one, but he's, and that's pretty thorough dis destruction. But he's going to, the second time, just before he comes back, he's going to burn the earth thoroughly, you know. And it's going to be roasted in a big way. And uh, we're going to be supernaturally protected, you know. But uh, we don't have that fear. So if you're hiding, just, if you're hiding a hundred stories underground, you'll still be burnt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna find them. In mm. fact, if if they, if even if the fire wasn't gonna get them, he would send his messengers in and take it, take them out. You know, in fact, it's not gonna be much unlike the day that he went into Mitzrayim, you know, Egypt, and he slew the firstborn of man and beast by his spirit and he he can do that they can hide under the rocks deep in the earth or the caves the self man-made caves but they can't hide from him and uh, these creatures that have been you know brought into existence through the corruption of his genetic code of men and animals and birds and spiders and all that uh, they're going to all be uh, be cut off from the earth. What?